If you had to put money on in a year's time, who's going to be the biggest hitter here? Who would you put your money on? I'd probably go with... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're going to go through an assessment. I'm going to show these guys how we can measure their physical capabilities that shows their potential limitations physically, how this transfers to their swing mechanics and how they're potentially losing club head speed as a result. By the end of it, we're going to find out who's got the most potential and who can make the biggest increase in that space of time. Yes. Big old day, this. <laughs> Big old day. Right, let's do it. Some of the testing we're going to go today, these are what the best players across the world are doing. This is more advanced testing to see kind of what the amateur average golfer can achieve and how we can make capabilities increase, not just on the golf course, but away from the golf course. Nice. Let's go. Let's do, nice. let's do this. Let's do this. Come on. So we're just going to go for a simple okay. warm up. Done properly, this can actually help increase your club head speed. So this is actually quite important, you know. So take your speed stick, put it out in front, stand nice and tall. And you're just going to try and do an overhead reach, keeping your arms locked out <laughs> and then just bring it back down and repeat. So you're essentially just trying to get those Breathe shoulders <laughs> nice and mobilized. Breathe in. As far as you feel you can go without bending those elbows. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Look at that. Is that good flexibility? Or? I think this is hypermobile. That's freakishly good. <laughs> Why? What the hell? Ah. Are you double jointed? I don't know. That's it. So, so do I win already? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Wait, what the hell is that? Okay, nice and simple. So now just all I want you to do is rotate it around the head, almost like you're doing like a rowing motion. So you should feel those shoulder blades just getting moving, just getting the shoulder joint nice and loose. Do both directions. So then I want you to put the club, or the one end of the club into the floor like this for me. Try and feel like you're going to push your bum backwards. So as far as you can go without kind of bending your knees. And then I want you to try and push your chest to the floor. So you should almost feel like you're pushing in on the butt end of the club. Chest to floor. You should feel some stretching sort of down the side of the back. You might yeah. feel it a little bit different places. <laughs> feel like my lats. Hold for two or three seconds. And then for an added stretch, all oh, you can do here is just feel like you're going to rotate your chest to one Jeez. side. So you should get one side of the back and the lat muscle really pulling and do both directions. <laughs> Fair, I can feel like this could really like loosen you up before. 100%, I'm always yeah. tight before, like as soon as I start around, like. So how many times do you play? Four or five holes in, you go, oh, I found my swing yeah, now. That's just really, <laughs> that's just warming up. Hole one, found it. That's it. <laughs> and then we're just going to put the club out in front, round about chest height, and go into a squat setup. And really simple, just want you to squat what feels like to parallel, maybe a bit lower, and then just power it back up. Trying to feel like you keep this club in line with the chest as you go so the upper body stays upright nice so you should feel like these it's just kind of getting the legs warm opening up the hips so this is what all the pros do like, uh, <laughs> this is exactly right. what the pros are doing right. yeah i've done six <laughs> go into a golf posture for me bring one foot slightly backwards no matter which because we can do both directions go into that golf posture maybe even exaggerate your posture to normal so almost like you're gripping down on a club and holding the club Hanging down, <laughs> like an AR, that's good. <laughs> I want you to rotate into that. your front hip, okay. okay? So you're gonna try and feel like you keep the club or your arms fully straight and turn that chest. And you should feel like you're trying to load into this front sort of glute muscle, this hip joint. Just try and keep your arms fully locked out. So it's almost, you are just essentially turning this upper body around the hip, you're not moving the arms. So you're just going to do a forwards lunge. You're going to keep the back knee off the floor so you're staying stable. And then you're going to rotate into the front hip. But you see how we're keeping stable. If you're a bit wobbly, obviously that's a little bit of a sign. But don't want to do it really quick. <laughs> so Sinus. control turn and then power it back up. Okay? okay. And then same on the opposite leg. So nice and stable at the bottom. Control turn and then powerfully drive back to the top. Are we changing every foot as we go? Yeah, alternate as you go. So exactly that, you should feel like you are warmed up now. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, for sure. You know, and that, you could do all those exercises, driving range bay, you know, in a changing room, if you want to keep it hidden. A lot of golfers feel a bit uncomfortable doing it, but it's worth doing for the sake of five minutes. Cut one swing, shower your top number five times, and then take it in turns. Jeez, got that power. 109. 116. 111. 
116. 116 was the biggest there. 116. Thing is, I had no glove. I thought I was going into Dave with the uh, with the stick. I'm glad I didn't fall up the hands there. Right. 117 off the bat. <laughs> <laughs> Let's crank this up, right? 120. 117. 120. 120. Come on! I was giving that so much. Yeah, the glove on. Oh, we got to go up now. Uh, what are we getting? Are we getting heavier here? Four. Is this, is that that, don't even read that out, Con. Don't even read that out there. Yeah, is that faulty? 119. <laughs> uh, not good. 111. So 119. Oh, you're, doing, you're doing like seven. I'm not doing five. 119 there. 118. See, it's not. It's not power though, is it? It's like. It's definitely uh, technique. 120. 120, man. I mean, I'm consistent. I'm out of breath. 120, though. Unlucky boy. 120, yeah? Unlucky, son. Right, I I'm going to get some swing action on this. What's the PT as well? Struggling. 1-9. You know, with the longest dive, I'm literally doing one this. 1-10. This is definitely heavier, isn't it? One nineteen. <sighs> 11. Come on, bro. That felt bigger. Ugh. 119. Whew. God, I'm out of so there's not a lot of room for improvement there. That's why I went quite low. I was, I mean, if them, if one of them beat me, fair, but I was giving it absolutely everything. 102. 102. 128. <laughs> How was Let's that? 120. Go. 117. <laughs> give up, Con. Give up. <sighs> 121. Bigger. See, it's the line there. I was getting into it there. You know what I mean? Accuracy. Unlucky, boy. Hey? You tried there. Bless you. Well, we'll get on to the real deal now, aren't we? <laughs> Bless you. So we're measuring basically uh, your vertical force capability in an explosive manner. So the higher the number is on here, strongly correlates to basically your higher clubhead speed potential. So if you're really high in here and you can't, your clubhead speed's not as high as it should be in terms of a ratio, we know you're losing that through technique and probably a little bit mentally. Right. Ah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Whereas if, you, if they correlate and we want to get more clubhead speed, we're probably going to benefit by getting more explosive more physically. More explosive, right. Yeah, so it's more so, like lead work and stuff. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So I'm looking at your data already on here, really, really high. Oh, really? As high as I've seen anyone really in all seriousness. Seriously? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my God. So for example, my ego is going through the longest the player I work with, although he's a long drive player, he's getting like 155 mile hour club head speed, but the, you've got a very similar number to him on there. Really? When you're ready, give me one. 131. Yeah, how, how many how many attempts do you have in there, Dave? So that's measuring all the forces kicking in. <sighs> nice, four two four. So it's very similar. So yeah. some both really big. Jeez. What, what, what do they get there? Four two four. Four two four. Producing more eight percent more force off your right leg. Wow. But that's quite normal. When you're ready, off you go. Nice, nice. Good. One more. We're looking for one key number. Okay. Three seventeen. Okay. Is that good? What is it? That is, that is good. Actually, it is good. So hands on hips. It's when you're ready. One nineteen. One more. Do you think better or worse? I have no idea. 310. 310. What, what was I? 319, weren't you? Just collected some data. Obviously, we've just chosen a couple of tests there. We would obviously do a little bit more in-depth testing to get more detail on certain elements. But from an explosive power perspective, obviously, the higher the number, the more effective your vertical force is, which is key to clubhead speed. 
Ronan and Connor, this is an average number, both got 424, which is actually extremely high based on the data I've collected across all ages and all skill levels. Athlete okay, level. so that's physically very, very good. Oh, fair play, boys. Declan, 310, Paddy, 317. Still oh. really good numbers, although much lower than you guys, yeah. but still actually really good power much, numbers. Much but what correlates here straight away, Rowan, obviously you've got the highest power number, let's say, and on average, your speed stick testing numbers were also the highest. So that straight away shows us explosiveness related to speed outcome. You're yeah. doing a good job there. Thank you very okay. much. Cheers, Sam. Um, and, but the interesting one with Connor, really explosive, but one of the quite a lot lower speed numbers in relation to what it could be. I see. Okay, so what we're going to go do now, we're going to do some speed testing out on the driving range with driver and bull, see how you transfer that colour red speed, get some data, and then I'm going to do some individual coaching with you, see if we can increase those numbers based on what information I've collected now. Right, guys, so we're going to do some ball speed tests. We're going to hit five balls each and see how fast, well, just what the number is, really. I don't think we're leathering it. We're just trying to hit a nice drive, so let's... Let's crack on. Oh, that was not good. Uh, what we got? Full speed, 149. 150. Come on then. 139. So 150 was my best, I think. Yeah, right, so we're gonna go and see Sam now, see what he can do with them numbers, if we can improve it, all that jazz. We measured Patrick's uh, ball speed, averaging about 144, high yeah. of 150, club head speed around about the uh, 105 mark, which correlates to the testing. We're just gonna go through a couple of really simple movement mechanics. So this is biomechanics, how can we move the body more efficiently to potentially produce a little bit more club head speed. One thing, one thing to create more speed, naturally, we yeah. need sometimes a longer turn. So a, the more the, the further the hands travel in the golf swing, the yeah. more time there is to create speed naturally, okay? okay? Think of most golfers who hit it a long way, they have quite a long back swing. What we see with you a little bit is when we turn, we can turn what almost is quite level and quite short. It won't feel short, but we can move the body a bit differently to get more turn. So what I want you to do, go into a golf posture for me with your arms across your chest. Yeah. Now, turn in a backswing for me with your arms across your chest like you would naturally do. So, okay, so you see how that band's stretching? Yeah. I want you to try and create more stretch on that band in the backswing, exactly. So you see how you're essentially elevating up a little oh, bit? Oh, right, okay. So you're not staying down, exactly that. That's mad. So you see how naturally you, then you can get more yeah, space. Yeah, yeah. So this is essentially elevating the rib That's cage mad. and getting yeah. a bit more up to then essentially, if you're up, you can come down. Whereas if you're already come a little down. bit too down, it's hard to go okay, down yeah. more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just do five, six of them just where you feel that motion. Good. Do five swings where you're just going to focus on trying to get that body a little bit more up. I want you just to feel that band where it's just a little bit more up and then swing as hard as you can. Okay. Nice. That's so weird. Well done. Nice. 98. I like that. Same yeah. thing, but move as hard as you can. So don't think too technical. Just okay. move with max effort. Good, good. Beautiful. On 10. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Okay. Come on. Oh. 149. Average is definitely up. Definitely up. Average is 149. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, I think 152, was that a big one? 154. 154? Unreal. So Dex got 160 ball speed at average already, which is actually very, very good, to be fair. So that's going to be quite hard to improve based on the numbers we've seen so far. Club head speed of up to 115. So already very good, transferring a lot of your force to a really effective level. So I just want to hit one more, and then we're going to try something simple, and I think we could just get a little bit more out of you, OK? OK. Do a swing, just so you know what I'm... A normal swing. Just a normal swing like you just do with that driver. Whoa. Nice, okay. Yeah. So now I want you to try and swing as hard as you can. Okay. 
without that taking you off balance. Good. Excellent. Okay. I want you to create that same feel. Beautiful. That's more like it. That, that's the one, okay? A little breather? Yeah. Okay. No, I'm good. You see I'm good. that last one you did? Yeah. Tell me what you felt you did differently there. Uh, just the, fe the feel where I came down on it. Okay. okay. I want you to do that same. Imagine you've got this resistance. Same power as yeah. well. If you top it, I don't care. <laughs> I just want to see if you can just let that go with that energy. I like that. I like that. Okay. So, really simple. Going to go back out on the range. Five more balls, roughly. See if you can beat those ball speeds, but move okay. with those feels for me. Yeah, yeah. That was pure. Got worse. He's made me worse now. I think I'm just knackered, to be fair. I am absolutely knackered. We've been driving all morning. And, uh, but I'm going to use them feels in the practice, 100%. When I go to the range, I'm going to use them. They're a good feel, that fan. Okay, so just to summarise what we've done. Now, it's really important to stress that whenever we do this sort of speed training stuff, it's not an exact science. It's individualised to the, to the person, depending on its movement mechanics, depending on fatigue, based on their understanding. So we've done a quick version of this. As Connor said at the end, felt a bit tired towards the end, a bit of fatigue. So just the results are shown. Um, First and foremost, Ronan, we know you showed explosive power in an abundance. Huge. When we kind of did the ball tests, we saw um, about the same numbers, so not really any change, but we tried to change some movement mechanics, which actually would typically could slow you down because as an, you're try, quite conscious. So yeah. the fact that there's no change, that tells us that actually there's quite a bit of potential to move forward with that. Okay. 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 Uh, Declan it stayed about the same in all seriousness. Mm. Um, and then Paddy, so I would say Paddy's, there's clear a clear big difference here. On average, uh, gained about, f well, four mile an hour ball speed uh, in the maximum and an average ball speed of a five mile an hour increase. Jeez, so, that stuff. so Paddy basically we would say could, with a few basic changes, could really increase overall okay, club head speed okay, and, and the distance hit the golf ball. Okay. And then oh. just finally, Connor, we, we saw a little bit of a drop off there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, getting tired. Um, but again, that relates to kind of fatigue, yeah. feeling that towards the end, last to hit probably hit more balls than anyone else through a bit of practice. Oh, 60, yeah. um, so we see kind of on average where we can make some changes. Mm. Obviously, we'd want to do a bit more testing. We mm. would want to go into that a bit more in individualized, but that's just giving you a really good insight to how the process would look and how we'd start that routine over a period of time. Right. Sick. So great work, guys. Cheers, great Sam. work. Cheers, Sam. Question, Sam, real quick. If yeah. you had to put money on any year's time, who's going to be the biggest hitter here? We all had lessons and stuff. Who would you put your money on? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, I would probably say, based on this data, data, I'd probably go with Deck. Oh, what? Oh no, you I thought you, didn't you? You then, thought you, didn't you? No, I oh, look, his balloons just burst. <laughs> Get in there. Deck, why is that? The, just the, re like, the reason what? being what? is... What's going on here? So the reason being, we're looking at the technique so Deck's got some great movement of how you utilize the ground, which is super important for I speed. I do. Um, you're <laughs> I already do. getting an average ball speed of 157 and 161 max. And bear in mind, that's with range balls. So they're about three, four mile an hour slower. Ooh. But your Getting explosive deadly. power was quite a lot lower than Ronan's and Connor's. So if you got a bit more explosive and transferred that a bit uh, more to the golf swing, uh, big jump. Wow. Big jump. <laughs> <laughs> big jump. Yeah. Who's the most, so time will tell. Who's the most flexible? Interesting. Too flexible. Too flexible. That was quality. Thank you very much.